mute yourself. And if you have any questions, uh, as I said before, please write to them in the chat and the entrepreneurs will be glad to answer them. If you have any questions regarding Curious Environment Hub, please contact my colleague Bramwell. You can see his email on the screen now. Also, feel free to share about the demo day on your social media. Uh, you can use, use the hashtag Growth Incubator, Social Business and Demo Day. Uh, in case of any technical issues, please bear with us. We hope that we won't have any issues today, but in case uh, there are any issues, um, we'll try to fix them as soon as possible. Um, yeah, so now I would like to go over the agenda very quickly. We will start with an opening, which we are doing now, and then my colleague Lydia will introduce you to what we are doing at Juno's Environment Hub. Afterwards, my colleague Bramwell will um, introduce you to what is Grow Up and what are we doing in this program. Then we will start with our first block of pitches for entrepreneur for a group of entrepreneurs will present their solutions. Afterwards, we will have a presentation from our guest speaker, Evelyn Gatwa from Sustainable Transport Africa. And then we will jump into the second block of pitches, which is going to be um, three businesses. And in the end, we will do a quick closure. Um, so now I would like to introduce you to my colleague, Lydia, who would um, introduce you about Juno's Environment Hub. Thank you very much, Andrea. I hope you can hear me well. Um, so thank you again and good afternoon, everyone. I am very excited to be attending the Grow Up Demo Day as it's a showcase of social businesses that have developed solutions to address environmental issues and mitigate climate change. It's a true reflection of who we are at UNOS Environment Hub, being that we are a global social business network that create solutions for the environmental crisis. We achieve this through designing and implementing social business-based solutions to environmental challenges that create opportunities along the value chain. Next slide, please. We, <clears throat> our mission is attained through these seven thematic areas that impact or are affected by significant environmental concerns. These pillars include circular economy, waste management, carbon neutrality, biodiversity and afforestation, sustainable agriculture, clean energy, and access to water and sanitation. Next slide, please. Our four offerings include incubation and acceleration of social businesses that focus on environmental issues for example, grow up. We also offer venture building and consulting advisory, which we undertake in close collaboration with both private and public stakeholders. Last but not least, we also train and educate communities and raise awareness on the urgency of environmental crisis. I'm therefore looking forward to the pitches today and also an interactive session with the participants. That's it from my end, Andrea. I would now like to introduce to you my colleague Bramwell, our regional program manager, who will share with you more about the Grow Up Incubator program. Over to you, Bramwell. Thank you, Lydia and Andrea, for um, uh, that um, introduction, and uh, Lydia for introducing the, what UNOS Environment Hub is doing and specifically in the east african um, region we have a number of programs and others can always be found in our website but today we are here because of um, grow up incubation program which is part of um, the larger brighter and greener future for african youth program that was a three-year program to support social businesses to create jobs while protecting uh, the environment. And these three programs are the Start Now, which is our online um, course for social business uh, plan uh, creation and development, and then the Grow Up Incubation, where we support the um, early stage social business entrepreneurs 
and then go deeper into that and with the zero plastic waste which uh, was more of a feasibility study on uh, municipality uh, solid waste management now um what is grow up so grow up is an incubation program that supports early stage entrepreneurs within the east african ecosystem who have uh, um their proven business concepts and who want to scale their social business to become more self sustaining both in uh, financial self sustaining environmental and social this is a six um, month program where the incubators receive a tailor made um, mentorship um, program based on their needs they also go through um, impact uh, interactive uh, capacity building bootcamps and one on one um, mentorship and also training with our our um, team and also our colleagues uh, from our partnering university who you will see in the next um, slide the participants also have an opportunity to have peer to peer support among themselves and uh, this is through the their uh, various interactive uh, model both directly and indirectly the program so far has been able to capacity build 75 social business entrepreneurs out of which um 30 of them have gone through the incubation program and this was divided into three cohorts the first cohort was more on waste management the second cohort was more on sustainable food uh, systems and now the cohort that today will be pitching um, as Andrea said earlier is based on circular impact cohort on and the focus is on sustainable tourism and e-mobility now we at UNOS Environment Hub uh, in order to support our entrepreneurs and our social business um, entrepreneurs in the most efficient and effective way we also partnered with um Eseda university and uh, which gave us five colleagues who have been supporting us and the social businesses um throughout the program these colleagues are just in the slides as you can see we have diana we have uh, frederick we have dario we have jamila and prem these colleagues have been um with us throughout the the this cohort and they have been interacting with the social businesses and supporting them uh in their work and the works you will see today and they will also be here to support the social business in case the social business um need more help so they are still with us and we will be working closely with them i'd like to take this opportunity on behalf of the UNUS environment hub uh, uh team to really thank the five for supporting our social businesses and um, making our social businesses really uh, investor ready and ready for this pro uh, this demo day today now who are our guests big guests today the guests today um are um social businesses from sustainable tourism and immobility within the east african um ecosystem and these social businesses vary from um, various other parts of the tourism um, value chain we have social businesses from planning and booking we have social businesses from accommodation we have social businesses from um excursion and um, uh, creative industries and today we will see what they have and these social business include um safari wallet from tanzania simple joy from kenya imuhira um, limited uh, from rwanda local bookings from tanzania chirol Freak from kenya uh, Triopia from Ethiopia, Jua Bikes uh, from uh, Kenya, Aramati Safaris from Kenya, My Tour Wallet from Tanzania, and 
tri uh, tri trike or a social um or um solar e-cycle from Kenya and um unfortunately three of these social businesses will not be um pitching today but the rest seven will be pitching today the pitch program is uh, as follows so we will have due to the issues with the internet uh, for various of our social businesses and technical uh, pro issues or challenges we recorded some um the pitches so we'll play the five minutes pitch and then after every pitch the social business entrepreneur will um be live to answer all the questions or to answer some of the questions that will be um placed on them from the audience so if you have any questions based on the um the pitch please write it on the chat and then we will uh, uh give it to the social businesses to uh, entrepreneurs to answer so we will start with our first uh, social business which is um safari wallet it's it's a sad story for the african tourism because you know the sector contributes a lot to the tourism to the economy of africa but imagine it's actually nearly impossible for a local african to travel within Africa or to afford or to even to even access a dream experiences so they can either travel themselves and their loved ones. This is because our service providers were highly focusing on them on promoting uh, experiences or tourism to the West, uh, Western um, customers, which are America, Europe, Asia and the rest. But at the same time, as we speak to today, Africa is actually missing the opportunity of serving closely. And I'll speak at the lowest level. 26 million middle class Africans who can actually afford to buy a number of experiences despite of all challenges that are there for one to acquire a single experience. Now imagine if Africans were given the same opportunity to buy whatever they wish at any time they like. This could be any type of experiences. Now this is exactly what we're bringing in to you, Safari Wallet. It's a travel fintech market platform that offers the freedom of travel to the locals by connecting them directly to the local certified service or pro providers for they can acquire any type of dream they wish to acquire. Now, the platform offers locals the opportunity to design their own experience from the scratch, or they can select multiple listed experiences. Away from that, with the financial tools on the platform, locals can actually pay by installment or even pay after travel in case of any changes, challenges, in case they cannot afford to pay everything at once, or if they are failed to do installments in a period, period of time that they've actually set for themselves. Now, what makes us really unique is that we allow our customers to personalize their experience. Our service is somehow human-centered, which means that we are one minute away to talk to our customer, or our customer can actually talk to a real human when there are challenges. We actually do guarantee every experiences by making sure there is an insurance embedded to make sure there is no loss and it always customer can be guaranteed to be served. Not only that, the financial model is so unique that people can do up to 12 installments or 40 installments if it's a weekly plan or monthly plan. And not only that, they can pay after travel. We are actually consider ourselves very unique because we are localizing travel for local Africans that would otherwise not consider to travel for financial reasons to prepay in installments and even pay over time. Now, our financial model is very accommodative. We only charge in 15% on each transaction is made on the platform, which that actually gives an average of $35 in each transaction if it's a one night or two days experience. So you can imagine what more could do. Since uh, 2018 to 2022, we've managed to transact close to $100,000 worth of experiences. We've now, for this year, we're looking forward to do at least 5,000 trips that we do believe will possibly generate close to $200,000 as a revenue by end of 2023. For, for us, what we've done so far, it's really interesting. We've built up a very strong team. We've actually managed to uh, have strong over 36 plus partnership within Tanzania and Africa itself. We have built up our first version of website and now we are actually at better version. We've won multiple awards within Africa and outside Africa, as well as establishing good, strong network uh, as you know, five within African countries. And possibilities for us is basically, we do believe that we are going to expand to other African markets as so quick, for example, Namibia, Botswana and South Africa. Away from that, we do believe in 
if we'd be invested in, we can actually transact close to ten thousand million dollars to ten million dollars within our platform just from twenty thousand trips only. Now we will only not that, but touch close to ten thousand in direct local jobs and support and even increase opportunities for local individuals to earn through our platform, as well as support close to three hundred small medium service providers only this year. So. What is so interesting is that we are raising $500,000 and we are welcoming to become part of Safari Wallet. And this fund will directly go to sales and marketing, product and engineering, people department, and as well as community, not only just for strong governance, but otherwise also to make sure that we are offering what we're promising. And all of this can be done by a very strong, resilient team, driven by tourism sector, finance, innovation, people, and data, and as well as technology. Myself, as a CEO, I have experience over 10 years within tourism and technology. That also goes same to my co-founder, Patrick, who has a knowledge around finance and working with banking sector. Plus, he has an MBA from Warwick and Manchester University. And Irene Marino is the product owner with skills within trading, communication, and relationship. I do believe if you give us an opportunity as Safari Wallet, we will actually not only change the African tourism, but also change the notion of travel for local Africans so they can afford to travel and add impact economically. Thank you. Thank you. That was Idi uh, from Safari Wallet. Um, any questions? Idi is with us here. Idi and Irene are uh, the co-founders and they are with us here. So any questions to them that they can, they can answer? They are here with us. Um, so we have a question in the chat by Jamila. Um, maybe you can unmute yourself and ask the questions yourself, please. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Great. So thank you so much for the pitch. Oh, I would like to learn more about your business model. So could you please possibly explain how you're planning to expand the number of partners who offer their experiences on your platform to reach your growth targets? Um, thank you so much. Um, could you please uh, repeat the question? I'm sorry. Yeah, sure. So since I would like to learn a bit more about your business model, I was just wondering if you could please explain how you're planning to expand the number of partners who offer their experiences on your platform to reach the your growth targets. All right. Um, yeah, thank you for the question. So um, for, for, for the business model, basically, um, as, as, as I said, we uh, work closely with service providers that includes the small medium tour operators, local guides. Um, so in every country that we are planning to go, we must possibly work with at least from the lower level association, let's say, for example, local guides to operators and also provide service within the sector. So we do believe that um, as we are as we are growing, at least we should have um, or include at least everyone on the value chain in order to deliver the service. So I might really not uh, give a certain number. It depends. It depends with uh, with the area that we'll be going. For example, for Tanzania itself, for this year, we're looking forward to uh, on board close to a thousand um, tour service providers within the country. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. We'll get the next. So thank you very much. If you have any other questions to Edie and Irene, who are co-founders are here, you can write it in the chat. Or um, Edie and Irene, please, you can put your contacts in the chat and your website so that um, our audience can also get in touch with you. So in the audience, we have impact investors. We have um, angel investors. We have uh, uh, social business entrepreneurs who have been in the program and also our other programs in, in East Africa, the Shisters and the BBB, and also um, our colleagues from the university and also the public audience. So please, um, here is an avenue for all the social business entrepreneurs to also get, get partners, get funding, and uh, um, also market their products. Thank you very much, Indy. So next is Simple Joy from Kenya. And uh, here we have uh, Sarah Noor. The floor is yours. So 
Now, let's see what they have. Good afternoon. My name is Sarah Nora from Simple Joys Creatives. I am not joined by my colleague Mary Moroki, but she'll be joining us the actual pitch day uh, demo date. Simple Joys Creatives sits on the idea that 38.9% uh, of the population in the coastal region are unemployed, and most, most youths are affected as well as they stay at home months at 44 and 12%. Um, respectively. And we also have another issue with unutilized heaps of coconut waste that end up uh, being burnt down. So our solution is um, to recycle this waste from coconut shells and at the same time train uh, young people and stay at home moms on crocheting and craft work. So by the end of the day, they'll acquire the skill and then provide a marketing platform for those that do crochet work and craft work at home. And this will consequently um, increase the number of youths and women trained and eventually reduce the rates of unemployment. These are some of the crocheted items that uh, Simple Joys Creatives has made. And then here we have the deco that has been made from the shells of the coconuts. So in terms of our market and industry analysis, we have our total accessible market that uh, is, is valued at 2.5 million US dollars. And this is about 13%. And then we have our serviceable addressable market, which is about 54%. And this is valued at 1.3 million US dollars. Then for our serviceable obtainable market, we have 10%, um, which is valued at 0 0.14 million US dollars. Our competitors are mainly the Maasai market. And in terms of our durability and pricing of our products, our products are more durable and yet they are customer friendly in terms of price. And yet they offer a high level of convenience and they are more flexible in their designs and utilization gives us a chance to have multiple uses for our products. And then we have a wide product range to choose from. Another addition is that we offer marketing and training platform, which we do not get from our competitors. In our traction, we have four people that are currently helping with the craft work and crochet work which uh, three, three, three are women and one, one is a man. And then we have our customers growing at 20% annually with our uh, annual average uh, revenue run rate at 1.68 million Kenya shillings. And then with 50% growth uh, profit margins, we've been able to sell 300 products for the past one year. So one unit of our product is um, ranged at an avenue, uh, annual average revenue of 5,600 Kenya shillings. Our financial ask is uh, 960 Kenya shillings for the first quarter of the year, whereas uh, this, out of this amount, 53% will go to our production hub, which is rent, furniture, licensing, and permits. And then raw materials would take 31%, which is now our yarn and hooks and accessories. And then the rest, which is 16%, will go to our marketing, which is going to be made up of our advertisement, branding, and packaging of our products. This is the team. Thank you so much for listening. Always remember that it's the simple joys that make life beautiful. Therefore, I invite any questions and inputs. Any questions, Sarah is with us here and Mary, they are all with us here. So if you have any questions, any questions in the chat, Andrea? I do have a question. Uh, I'm from okay. I'm, I'm from Asada. Mm -hmm. I'm a student at Asada. Uh, this is the question regarding how are you planning to expand the production line in the future? Are you planning to employ more people and train more people on the crochet crocheting items, or are you trying to use equipment, or is there any plan from that perspective to increase the portfolio or increase the production, like the quantity of the products produced? Sarah or Mary, just unmute and answer the questions. Hi everyone, uh, thank you for the question. So actually, yes, that is part of what we want to do. Uh, uh, because we have we have a vision of opening a production hub whereby now we can train young people and 
and these women on craft work when it comes to the coconut, uh, craft works from coconut shelf and also crocheting. So at the moment, that is what we don't have, but we are foreseen if we are able to set up a production hub and not just one, but uh, like have several branches everywhere, we'll be able to reach out to many young people uh, who are into, who are interested in craft work and, and also crocheting. Yeah. And also now from not the production hub, we'll also provide a marketing platform, not only for those who we have trained, but for any other individual out there who is into crocheting and they don't, they don't necessarily have the best option for marketing their products. So we come in there to help them. I hope that- Thank you so clear. much. Okay. It will definitely clear. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mary. Thank you uh, for answering the questions. You can get uh, Simple Joy also through their uh, Instagram uh, page. So please, Mary and Sarah, you can post um, your contacts where our audience might be able to see and read more what you're doing and also get in touch with you. Thank you very much. Next presenters are from... Emohira, uh, ecotourism. This is a, uh, a social business in Rwanda, and let's hear what they do. Hello there. I'm Jean Claude Musoni, a co founder of Emohira Ecotourism Rwanda Limited, a community based tourism destination manager in the southwest of Rwanda. Emohira means at home. You are most welcome. Dear participant, as we begin, you may ask yourselves why we are there. As two indicators, Yamasheti, our key operating area, has offered enough land for people who might be interested to set up, to start long to mid-range accommodation opportunities for tourists aiming to stay for more time. Secondly, Yamasheti, our operating area, again, is ranked the lowest in terms of skills. There is a big gap in terms of skills. So there are no qualified and experienced community-based operators for authentic experiences for cultural immersion. These two motivate us to be there. How we do this? We provide opportunities for authentic experience to tourists through cultural and local immersion. To be practical, this is through offering camping and food and beverage services. We are strategically located being a stopover for people who might be doing kayaking tours on Lake Kivu, people who might be traveling the Kivu Belt uh, destination, people might, for instance, be doing Congo Nile mm, Trail. We also have a speciality around homestays. If you really want to enjoy Rwandan local traditional life, will be the best people to be contacted. But again, this is through uh, community-based tourism activities such as local birding, uh, canoeing, or tours on Lake Kivu, doing village and nature walks, but also through our beautiful traditional and cultural dance. In the industry, we are not a one man on an island. There are people who might be considered as our competitors. The competition can be uh, evaluated in terms of what we offer. There are people who offer uh, quite similar uh, services to what we do, uh, but still the demand is not yet fully uh, responded to. We believe that if we are able to uh, set up cottages, uh, we will be contributing to the demand which is there. So the, the competition is there, but it's not uh, very meaningful. Uh, we can still contribute to uh, serving uh, the demand which is uh, not yet responded to. I would like to prove that you wouldn't be disappointed if you take a bright decision to invest in this startup. Uh, our target would be to only sell to 8% uh, of total arrivals, and you wouldn't be uh, disappointed for only two reasons. One, ecotourism in rural areas like ours is attracting more people. But again, uh, arrivals in our area is believed to be 50% in a scale of six years, 2022 up to 2028. 
eight. So uh, ecotourism is a trend. And again, our area is believed to double uh, attraction in a scale of six years. Of course, there should be a team behind all of this. We are a team of four youth who are motivated to run this and make it happen. Uh, all of us have uh, skills and experience in terms of hospitality, in terms of service offer. Yeah, we are very motivated to make this happen. Um, Dear investors, regarding our mission and our vision, there is what we ask in order to be very impactful. We have evaluated ourselves and we found that if we could be enabled to set up three cottages fully equipped, yeah, we could make it as we already have, we own our own land, our own plot. Briefly, we are asking 30,000 US dollars that could be used to set up three cottages and to fully equip them. Philanthropically and economically, we have offered four full-time employment to four youth. We've also offered 15 to 20 part-time employment for people who supply our gift shop. We also mobilize uh, local community. Environmentally, we've ranked innovative ecotourism business by GIZ uh, through the Kivu Belt call for proposals. We've also run a project of uh, 100 children conservation. This was sponsored by MasterCard Foundation. Uh, Rema Rwanda Environment Management Authority in 2020 has uh, ranked that top four countrywide in green business owned by youth. In terms of education, we offer academic internships to people from colleges. We also run uh, study tours to students from local universities. As I conclude, I wish you a warm welcome, Imuhira. Please join us. Thank you for attending. As I conclude this, I wish you a warm welcome, Imuhira. Thank you for attending. Bye. Uh, thank you very much, Jim. So any questions to Imuhira? Any questions online? Any questions? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Hi, this is Diane. Uh, I just wanted to thank you for your pitch. Uh, I am actually more inquisitive to learn more about the impact of your business on the community. Uh, would it be please possible for you to elaborate further on how your business creates value for the local community and the ecosystem? Thank you so much. Uh, I'm Jean-Claude, but there is also Esther uh, who would also contribute to this. Please confirm if you can hear me. Yes, I can hear you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Diana, uh, for a very good uh, question. How do we contribute to the community? And um, yeah, first of all, we are uh, economically sensitive, you see, and the community is under this climate. The, the, the community is under the, in the whole umbrella of the the environment, so sensitively, climate change con concerned, we are contributing. But also in terms of altruism and philanthropism, we are we contribute to the community through offering job jobs, uh, which is direct to hiring people. Uh, we have hired for people who are, who are kind of vulnerable people now have full time job and they are paid monthly, but also. Uh, Large, largely, we are also contributing to the to the uh, to the community. We are mobilizing people. We are bringing in people who are contributing to to the community, and it, and this could not be possible during our absence. Briefly, this is what I can say about our contribution to the community and to the environment. Briefly, except if Esther has anything to to add on. Uh, otherwise, thank you so much, Diana. Thank you very okay. much for your answer. Thank you, Diana. Thank you, Jian and Esther. If uh, you want to um, conduct or uh, contact um, Emohira, please, we will be sharing their contact also in the chat. 
so that you can also check uh, their products, their company, or the social business out. Next is uh, local bookings from Tanzania. Unfortunately, um, the entrepreneur is unable to join for the question and answer, but we are making sure that if you have any questions, just write it on the chat. We are trying to support her to join uh, for the uh, to answer the questions, but let's see and hear what they do. My name is Esther Oosterhuis, founder of Local Booking, a nature oriented travel app for small and medium tour operators, accommodation owners and their customers. Tour operators are the connection between the natural environment, the communities, government and the rest of the world and play a central role as intermediaries between tourist and tourism service suppliers. Tour operators can influence the choices of consumers, the practice of suppliers and the development patterns of destinations. This unique role means that tour operators can make an important contribution to furthering the goals of sustainable developments, protecting environments and cultural resources. Although tour operators play this unique role, tour operators face foreign rivals with daunting array of advantages, substantial financial resources, advanced technology and seasoned marketing and management skills. Small and medium tour operators lack resources and technical knowledge to be visible online and therefore pay high commissions to online travel agents in order to get customers. Tour operators receive fixed room rates from accommodation owners, also called standard tour operator rates or STO rates. These rates are given to tour operators once a year for the year ahead. These STO rates are based on cost calculations and the prediction of the future and what the competition is doing. Therefore, these rates are often on the high side. Once accommodation owners move near 2024 and they still have empty rooms, right now, the only thing an accommodation owner can do in order to actively sell more rooms is to sell these rooms on room booking websites direct to the customer for market clearing rates. These rates are often much lower than the previous giving STO rates to the tour operators and thereby paralyzing tour operators from selling rooms. This results in room booking commissions ending up at large for known companies based abroad. The loss of these room booking commissions in combination of the high commissions paid to online travel agents leave small and medium tour operators with waffle thin profit margins and the very survival of local owned SMA's tour operators in emerging countries is currently at stake. Our solution, local booking is based on a B2B network effect between tour operators who wants to sell rooms to their customers and accommodation owners who wants their rooms filled. Local booking enables accommodation owners to offer market clearing prices direct to tour operators. These rates are only visible to local registered small and medium tour operators. Tour operators are being verified at sign up. Online room booking websites typically charge 20% room booking commission. Local booking does not charge commission. Therefore, accommodation owners can advertise their net room rates, the rates without the added 20% accounting for commission. Now, a tour operator can buy this room and sell this room to his customer for rates below the online room booking website, inclusive their markup. And in the room booking commission will go to the small and medium tour operator. A tour operator who sells on average 35 safaris per year could increase earnings through commission by around $10,000. Our business model is based on a freemium where tour operators and accommodation owners can sign up for free, but if they like to be visible to customers, they pay a yearly subscription of $300. Local booking is bottom up with a B2B network effect and therefore is able to offer a freemium and charge a subscription. Local booking also creates a huge value for its users by strengthening local connections using a network effect between buyers and sellers. Other platforms lack this value. The total addressable market is over 10,000 customers and $300 subscription fee an annual recurring revenue of $3 million in East Africa alone. Our current burn rate is 3,000. Cash left in the bank is 20,000. We have 312 pre-subscribed up and 350 prospects in our pipeline. Our customer acquisition cost is estimated $80 and the lifetime value at $600. We are looking for an investment of 150,000 to spend 35% on technology development and 35% on marketing in order to drive revenue 
and customer responses will help us create a technology that will accelerate the creation of a product that is in line with the needs of the market. There is a growing argument that tourism success should not be measured solely in visitors' numbers, but rather in its ability to contribute to local economies and the net benefit it provides to the destination. Maximizing nature-based incentives will motivate improved management of natural ecosystems. Healthy ecosystems will keep visitors coming. Among the key traits we possess with this team are leadership and management, strategic business planning, creative and critical thinking and problem solving, accounting and reporting, web development, sales and marketing, and a deep commitment to making a change. Our first funding last year catapulted us with a proof of interest and with over a thousand likes on Facebook from tour operators and accommodation owners, we are assured and inspired by the many positive reactions and we raised another $20,000 to develop a beta version, which we launched this April. The purpose of this beta version is to learn from users and customers while raising more money to develop the B2B local booking website and app to launch in this November 2023. We ask you to support local booking in order to provide tour operators in East Africa with the capacity and tools to play their unique role in preserving East Africans' natural environment by building a circular tourism economy Thank you for listening to the local booking presentations and we hope to be in touch. Thank you. So that is Esther and uh, we are just sharing with you uh, her contacts so that um, in case you have questions, uh, you can also write an email to her. But if she's able to join us by the end of the, before the end of the program, we will um, allow her to answer some of the questions. Now, um, sustainable tourism and e-mobility in Africa is growing very fast, and um, we have various trends, challenges, and opportunity at the same time. With us here is Evelyn Gatua, an environmental and sustainable um, mobility experts at um, um, Sustainable Africa and uh, will be our keynote speaker for today. So she's based in Kenya and I want to invite her now so that she can also give us more information about herself and uh, just take us through what is the current status of this topic in Africa or in East Africa, and uh, where are the opportunities and what are the challenges that are uh, entrepreneurs or social businesses are facing in this um, industry? Evelyn, you can just unmute and take us through. Okay, thank you, Bramwell. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you're joining us from. My name is Evelyn Gatua, and I'm delighted to be here to be sharing my thoughts on sustainable tourism and mobility. Before we engage further, I'd like to congratulate the 2023 Circular Impact Cohort for making it this far. I believe that the innovative solutions you bring to the table will go a long way in helping us achieve the sustainability agenda. Also, a big thank you to all the partners who made this possible. So having made those remarks, I'd, I'd wish to proceed to my presentation. So my topic for today, that's my brief bio. I'm an environmental professional and a sustainable mobility expert. Yeah, the next slide, please. So having made those remarks, uh, I would wish to proceed to my, pre to my presentation. My topic for today is sustainable tourism and mobility for conservation and local livelihoods in East Africa. Sustainable tourism is the kind of uh, tourism that seeks to minimize negative impacts of tourism activities on the environment, protect uh, local culture, and promote uh, socioeconomic growth. So over the years, we have, uh, as you can see, there are some of the uh, sustainable tourism practices in East Africa. East Africa, the East African region has been uh, endowed with uh, some of the world uh, leading tourist destinations 
for example, we have Zanzibar in Tanzania, we have Queen Elizabeth National Park in Uganda, we have Lake Kivu in Rwanda, and our very own Masai Mara National Reserve in Kenya. So over the couple of uh, couple 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 years, uh, we have seen some of the trends in sustainable tourism, uh, eco tourism, which focuses on responsible travel to natural areas, and this promotes conservation and supports local communities. Uh, we also have uh, we have also seen a trend in carbon neutral travel. This is where travelers are, of, are offsetting their carbon emissions by purchasing carbon credits and supporting renewable projects. Uh, we have also seen an increase in sustainable accommodation facilities, for example, hotels and ecologies, uh, which are practicing uh, renewable energy, waste management and water conservation. Um, we have also seen another trend in local and, and organic food. This is promoting sustainable food production and reducing the carbon footprint of agricultural systems. Last but not least, uh, is an increase in green tra transportation where most tourists are using uh, the non-motorized non transport uh, facilities, uh, walking, cycling, and also we've seen the rise uh, in electric safari vehicles, for example, in, in Serengeti National Park in Tanzania. So as we look at, at sustainable, as we look at electric mobility as a sustainable mobility solution, we all know that mobility is an integral uh, part in our lives as transport allows us to access different activities. We are able to go to the shops, we are able to go to supermarkets, we are able to go to work. And with that, we note that electrification of transportation mode is growing. And with the EV ecosystem, which consists of uh, vehicles, batteries, charging infrastructure, electricity generation and distribution, there is need to transit to electric mobility. Yeah, that's a slide showing the e-mobility ecosystem, which consists of uh, the government, the manufacturers, the vehicle users and owners, and also the, the transportation uh, services providers. So as we can see, there have been some notable trends in e-mobility across East African region. Uh, some of the trends that are cutting across, we've seen uh, there's government support. There's a lot of goodwill from the government. Uh, the governments are offering um, fiscal and unfiscal uh, incentives. There's also a lot of investment in infrastructure, the charging infrastructure, the battery swapping stations. We've also seen a lot of innovation and in, in entrepreneurship, a lot of transportation startups that are coming up to help it transit uh, to electric mobility. Next slide, please. Yeah, those are some of the uh, trends in Ethiopia and Tanzania, among uh, the other countries we've seen previously. So, having talked about the trends, let us now look at the opportunities for. Okay. So having looked at the, the trends, let us now look at the opportunities for sustainable tourism and electric, and, and electric mobility in East Africa. One, we have investment in sustainable infrastructure. We have sustainable transportation, renewable energy, community engagement and conservation initiatives. So, and also policy changes. So investing in policy changes, this is where we, uh, policies can be formulated to regulate or um, uh, or limit emissions from um, the fossil fuel vehicles. Uh, we can incentivize sustainable practices to, to promote environmental friendly uh, practices. Uh, we can also promote um, sustainable uh, investments in renewable energy. We can use power, we can use, we can use solar power, we can use wind power and also the hydropower. Next slide, please. Um, having looked at the opportunities, we can mention some of the challenges are uh, uh, being experienced in both sectors. There is lack of funding. We find that um, there is inadequate access uh, to to finance. Most transportation startups are are not able to uh, access funds, which are uh, and this make is making uh, most immobility services not being able to be scaled up for mass adoption. 
There's also lack of awareness among stakeholders, policymakers, business and cons uh, businesses and consumers, high implementation costs, for example, the, the upfront uh, cost for purchasing, an, uh, for purchasing an electric vehicle is so high, cultural and behavioral barriers, it's so hard to tell people to change from a certain behavior they are used to, to transit to a new uh, behavior. Uh, can go to the next slide, please. So as we look, as we've looked at challenges, it's only fair that we mention some challenges. We recommend some systemic uh, solutions to promote uh, sustainable tourism and mobility in East Africa. One, we have policy and regulatory measures. This includes our strategies which can be uh, put in place, which can be implemented. For example, uh, deadlines of facing out uh, ICE vehicles. We have standards. We can. Uh, bring on board standards to, to standardize the charging infrastructure, uh, the ports, the batteries, uh, and all that. Number two, we have financial strategies. Uh, this uh, finance, finances can be, can be brought about, for example, in asset financing. We have the NCBA Bank in Kenya, which uh, have rolled out a 2 billion shillings, Kenyan shillings, to finance uh, purchasing of electric vehicles as part of its green finance strategy. We can also have economic incentives such as purchase subsidies, which can be differentiated according to the vehicles and the vehicle type and the vehicle prices. We have tax exemptions for EVs. We can have carbon pricing. Uh, this is a tool that uh, puts a price on carbon emissions, and this can go a long way to help people transit from uh, fossil fuel vehicles to electric vehicles. The other one, we have uh, public and private partnerships. This is collaborations between government and private companies. Government and private companies can collaborate in deploying infrastructure and partnerships can help reduce the burden on any one organization and spur growth in mobility. There's also uh, investing in infrastructure and related business models. So investing in infrastructure, we can have both public and home charging uh, stations electric vehicle st uh, charging stations, we can have EV uh, charging infrastructure along busy highways, we can have battery swapping stations, and also we can also have uh, energy storage systems. So the energy storage systems can include batteries, which can help to reduce peak demand and provide uh, auxiliary services to the grid. The business model uh, derived from this type of infrastructure is by collecting revenue, which uh, from the sale of the batteries, or provision of these services. The other solution we can implement is investing in renewable energy, just like I've, I've mentioned before. We can invest in solar power, we can invest in wind power, which can, and all this will help to, you know, promote circular economy. Last but not least, we can invest in research and innovation. Research and innovation in battery technology, that is the chemistry of the batteries, the charging, infra, the charging materials, the manufacturing processes, the charging technology, it can be wireless charging, it can be smart charging, and also the electric motor technology. All this, invest in research, uh, will help drive the technology forward and also accelerate the transition to a sustainable future. Please note that this is not a conclusive list. We can have so many solutions, but these are some of the ones uh, I picked from the whole, uh, the whole research. So in my conclusion, the next slide, please. In conclusion, we say that uh, sustainable tourism can help to conserve the environment, promote economic growth by creating employment opportunities, thus alleviating poverty and improving livelihoods, just as I've seen some of the startups are doing um, to promote the growth of electric mobility, interventions such as local assembly industries, adapting industry tariffs, uh, waiving import duties, and taxes, establishing low emission zones for um, electric vehicles and promoting the inter interoperability of mobility infrastructure and services. All these, uh, all these activities need to be pursued so as to achieve the sustainability agenda. So I'm happy to uh, answer any questions. I think that has been my time. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Evelyn. Thank you for that presentation and as we are waiting for questions or a few questions from the audience i have a question uh, for you 
one of the critical challenge was um, more cultural and behavior, behavioral um, issues that are affecting the sustainable tourism and immobility in East African ecosystem. A number of our social business today and who are in this uh, cohort focus on domestic tourism. And uh, this topic is quite still, as, part, as much as it's not new out there, but still culturally um, domestic tourism is still affected because not most people are um, um, really traveling domestically within the East Africa. What can you encourage or how, what can you encourage the social businesses here present and who are focusing on domestic tourism or local tourism as a, a business model to do in order to create this um, awareness and um, really deliver the services to the local communities? OK, thank you, Bramwell, for your question. So we find that most of us who are in Kenya, let me let me use Kenya as an example. We do not know that there are very many uh, tourist destinations across the world, no, across the country. We all know of the coast. So when you when you have money, you think, uh, let me run to, let me rush to the coast. That's the only tourist destination. So I think uh, what the social businesses can do one is marketing and educating the marketing through uh, digital platforms so that uh, we can we can uh, educate our people on on very many opportunities out there for destination uh, for tourist destinations across the country okay. thank you um on the same cultural and behavioral change one of our, our social businesses that will also be pitching today is focused on uh, immobility so we had two focusing on immobility but one is enabled one will be pitching um in the next phase yeah. are we ready in the east african um ecosystem to uh, to adopt and implement the e-mobility e-bikes for example are we prepared to to um adopt this um way or um, medium of transport number one and number two what are the opportunities in, in terms of um, funding and also just um, support for the businesses or entrepreneurs in the immobility e um, ecosystem. Okay, thank you again. So to answer your question, I believe there has been a lot of goodwill even from the public itself. Uh, for example, I've been involved in a lot of pilot uh, projects for electric electric bikes. And when we were doing the project, uh, you know, we came into contact with the local communities and, you know, people could come and ask, uh, what is this? What is this bike? What are the advantages of using uh, an electric bike over the ICE bike? And you see, when you create confidence, you first create confidence in this in the local community. And after you've created confidence by with time, with time, you'll find that it will be easy for them to to change from or to, rather to transit from using the ICE bikes to now using the EV, EV's bike. Also from, uh, to answer your question, uh, to, to help people transit from using an EV bike to an ICE bike, we need uh, the prices of, you know, an electric bike to be at least to be lower so that uh, the local monanchi can help, can can be able to, to get them, can be able to afford them rather. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Evelyn. So Evelyn, I don't know if you you will be with us until the end, but uh, Evelyn's contacts are on the screen. If you have any yeah. questions still, you can use the chat um, button to really write your question and then we will um, share with Evelyn. Do you have any questions? We don't have any questions for now, but we can continue with the second block of the page. Okay, okay, thank you very, very much. So we will be going to the second phase of uh, the pitches, and the, the next one is uh, Tirol Afrique Tours and Travel, which is based in Kenya. Alan is also with us here. So, Alan. Will... Hello, everyone. Welcome to this presentation. My name is Alan Ochieng Job from Tirol Afrique Tours and Travel. 
while we engage the business of uh, leisure and safaris, we take clients to view beautiful sceneries in the national parks and reserves. You find these national parks and reserves are mainly located in the asal areas, the arid and semi-arid lands, which are surrounded by communities who are languishing in poverty and are drought stricken. So the problem comes in that while two operators are enjoying selling the national parks and making revenues, uh, the local communities, the revenues don't reach them. They continue suffering. And statistics show that 17% of Kenya's population live below the poverty line. Out of this, slightly over 40% of those affected occupy the asset areas. So looking at the local communities would also help to reduce uh, the level of poverty within the country. We offer local community-driven tours that uh, provide uh, a revenue share model where 5% of the tour is spent is uh, passed on to the community. And there's an integrated approach we have where the, 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 the tour vehicles, we have a village elder who accompanies the guest as well as the tour guide. The village elder is able to explain uh, some, some things that the normal tour guide wouldn't be able to explain, like historical occurrences, uh, animal behaviors, human wildlife con conflicts, things that happen real time. We also have training opportunities to the youth who are very enthusiastic about to them, and of course women are empowered and are able to showcase and sell the artifacts. This gives you a good picture of our products and services and our different clientele, so ranging from single traveler to luxury traveler, and then different services from adventure. Luxury traveler might prefer all flight safari, single traveler might prefer an adventure, just shows you the different products and our different clientele. Uh, the market for tourism paints a bright picture because already the government projects by 2030, 3 million tourists or 3.2 million billion dollars in revenue. So if you look at what is accessible, you can see about 5% of the available market will be available to us this uh, account of about 160 million dollars by the year 2030. So if we get more realistic and say we're just targeting 1% of the market we can access based on the products and services we're offering, then you'd say looking at about $1.6 million to generate by the year 2030, which is a pretty good outlook. When we take up a competitor analysis, as the diagram indicates, we find that a lot of our competitors are either doing only tours and travel, engaged a little bit in environmental conservation, but not many are engaged in both environmental conservation and local community involvement, which makes us stand out. These figures show our financials from 2019 to 2022, with the segment of international tourists only leaving aside transport or air ticket and other segments, only international tourists. 2019, $15,000. 2020, $5,000, slightly because of the pandemic. 2021, $18,000. $2022, $22,500. This chart shows our financial projections for the next three years, 2023 to 2025. We expect our financials in tourism to improve up to about $45,000 by the year 2025, based on uh, recovery of the industry of the pandemic, the positive outlook of the industry, political stability now, and of course, if you accept our proposal, then you expect to generate more revenues with the activities that we'll be doing. Our ask is uh, $50,000, with a big chunk of 40% going to promotion. Promotion here covers uh, travel trade, traveling to European countries once in a while, to be able to market ourselves and create a presence. Of course, also advertising in online sites that are found in Europe so that people get to know more about us, increasing the number of visitors and therefore increasing our impact on the local community. Capacity building, we will onboard a uh, professional CBT. Uh, this is a community-based tourism to help us in formalizing the program, ensuring more people are trained. And finally, we will invest in a tour caravan, which will take up to 25% of uh, the revenue so that we can be able to cut costs that are initially being used to hire vehicles. And also at the same time, we can be able to hire the vehicle which increases revenues and ensures the program we have is more sustainable. When you invest in us, you already increase the impact we will be having, positive impact we will be having with the local community. For instance, we will increase our disbursements to the local community to up to $5,000 by the year 2025. More youth and women will be trained. More, some jobs will be created more than what we were creating. And of course, women will be more empowered because we will expose them to the market as they sell their wares. You will also be helping us to further the UN Sustainable Development Goal, Goals of uh, uh, Zero Poverty, Zero Hunger, uh, Education, and Economical Empowerment. The company has four key members in management. As displayed, uh, we have Alan, Christian, William, the accountant, Jen Maris, who's in transport and logistics, and four other members who assist in daily running of day 
It's been a pleasure presenting to you. In case you need to reach us, please use the contacts on the slide. So that is that is Alan. Alan is with us here. Any questions? Uh, I do have a question. Uh, it's about like uh, understand it. You're sharing the profits of whatever you get. Uh, five percent of the community. Do you have any plans or strategies on expanding that budget, or how are you planning to use that budget in, in the community? How is it going back to the community? Can you expand a little bit on that? Hello. Alan. Hello. Yes, Alan. Thank you for your for your question. Uh, mm -hmm. This is talking about uh, our revenue share model with the local community. What we do is uh, we estimate that per client we gain about five we gain about five hundred dollars. So what we give back is about twenty dollars. This is a standard mm -hmm. that we have put in order to be able to support the local community. So what we will do because this is a step by step something we are doing in steps step by step. So what we will do as we gain traction to the program as we expand the program. As you can see, we have a plan that we're coming with, trying to onboard someone on community-based tourism. So it means that we will then have a look at if we have we are generating more revenues, and therefore what we have to give to the community becomes more, then we will have a structure. Having a structure means we will now decide and say, instead of giving out the money, then we can put a pool of the fund and therefore come up with a project in collaboration with the local community rather than now giving it as a cash stipend every time our guests visit there. Thank you so much. Uh, that, that makes sense. It, it, it looks like it has a lot of potential. You can create programs, trainings, like you said. It's it's a great opportunity. Thank you, friends. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Rem, for the question and Alan for the uh, for answering. From Kenya, we will shift directly to Ethiopia, where we have Triopia. Let's hear what they do. Hello, everyone. We bring you Triopia, which is a one-stop platform for travelers to find tour package, events, local experiences, and more while they're in Ethiopia and beyond. You can find us on Android apps, our websites, and through our call centers. Triopia operates as a two-sided marketplace, one for the service providers, increasing their global visibility and making it easy to design and post their tool package, and second for the customers as a one-stop shop for a smooth journey of tool discovery and bookings, and seamless secure payment with a, with a guaranteed service. The problem we have identified is, is that there is no single online portal marketplace for tourism and leisure activities with an easy and secure payment options that tourists wanting to explore Ethiopia can serve. And the solution we are providing for that is aggregating local experiences, tour events, tickets, hotels in Ethiopia, and making it easy for travelers to search, select, and buy, buy on a one-stop platform. In addition to building a platform, for tour operators to quickly design, post, and promote their services online, wherever they are. Our business model is based on a 10% commission, which is topped on the price provided by our partners. Over the years since Triopia was launched, we have achieved several milestones, like developing and launching our MVP, onboarding 20 plus providers, we have released and tested our website and mobile application, and we have acquired 1,000 registered customers, selling more than 100,000 Ethiopian per world package. Through the several online payment options we provide, and currently we have more than 30 plus suppliers and more than 1,000 registered users. Per the study released by the UN World Tourism Organization, by 2030, customer spending on tourism and related sectors in Africa is projected to reach about $261.7 billion. And overnight visitors to Ethiopia are set to reach a total of 2.9 million by 2025. And from this, Triopia targets to generate 3 million US dollars in revenue over the next five years. Currently, Triopia is seeking 117,018 US dollars for the first year, and where 15% of this amount will go to hiring and creating 20 additional employment opportunities. And whereas the 35% is 
for marketing and promotion. And the remaining 15% will go to quality control and enhancement. We are a team of five individuals, and the first one is Salomon Kaza, who is our co-founder. Salomon has a software engineering background, and in 2020, he founded 1888 EC, the first venture studio in Ethiopia, and Triopia became the first startup to be born from this studio. And Betelhem Zayun is our chief executive officer, and she is an elegant tour and travel specialist with more than 10 years of professional experience in the tourism industry. Our current interim CEO is Yor Danos, and she, ha she is a professional customer service expert with more than eight years experience in the airline industry. And Kumru is our full stock developer, and he's in charge of the technical team developing the portal for Triopia. And last but not least, we have Faven, who is an experienced traveler and photographer, and is currently working as a customer. Okay. Um, the the Chiopia team is here with us. Any questions to them? Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Yep. Um, Go ahead. Hi. All right. My name is Pauline. Hi, Pauline. Uh, this. All right. This is um for Chiopia. I just want to yes. understand: Are your seasons like? Are you? Are you? holiday seasons like Kenya's or is there a difference like uh, of peaks and high, high seasons? Betty and the team, you can unmute and answer. Betty? Pauline, we will, we will, you can write your email on the um, chat and then the question and then Betty can follow up with you. Okay. Okay. Please. Sure. And then from Ethiopia, we jump back to Kenya, where we have the Jua bike, which is the e-mobility um, platform. Let's hear what they do. Hello, everyone. My name is Geoffrey Mwangi, Operations Director at Jua Bike, a company aimed at inspiring sustainable growth of small and medium enterprises, as, re as well as conserving the environment by providing green transport solution. We are solving the problem of air pollution caused by gas emissions from vehicles, high transport cost, and health problems associated with not doing body exercises. Our solution is an electric bicycle that is fast, affordable, safe, and uses clean energy, thus zero emissions. You get to exercise as you beat the traffic while commuting to work or doing your delivery says no time wasted. You can also reduce the cost of transportation by approximately 95% and they ask there is no need of buying fuel or paying bus fares. Our kit can be installed in any base school and comes with a thousand watts motor and has a top speed of 45 kilometers per hour. Our second product is an e trike mainly for cargo transport. The rear carrier can be switched from a cargo carrier to a passenger carrier or a mobile shop, as you can see on this diagram. The e trike comes with a motor of 2000 watts and a top speed of 45 kilometers per hour. It have a carrying capacity of 250 kgs. Our target market for the kids is commuters, last mile delivery agents, courier companies, and small enterprises. The e has almost the same market, except that this has demands 
in the agricultural sector. Our competitors are Iwaka, EB, and Akride, who focus mainly on selling concrete bikes. In addition to what our competitors are offering, your bike offers conversion kits, making it cheaper for bike owners to own e-bikes without having to buy the full bike. Also, your bike has partnered with various financiers like Haki Africa, making it easy for commuters and low earning delivery agents to own e-bikes by giving them flexible payment plans. Our new it cycle also makes us different with our competitors as the demand is too high on the courier sector. Our revenue model, we have a cash sale whereby customers can purchase the bike through a conversion kit on cash. And also we have the financing sale whereby customers can own the e-bike by paying as low as 2 USD per day through our financing partners as they use the e-bike or the e-trike. Our company was established in April 2021 and we launched our first three pilot bikes in June 2021. We have a goal of, of having more than 1,000 e-bikes on the road by the first quarter of 2024. We also plan to open more service centers within the country. We are looking for 500,000 USD which will be used to develop Pego solutions, roll out a thousand dual e-kit and also roll out dual e track and establish five service centers. Our team is uh, Paul Mohe, who is the founder and the CEO, I, Jeff Mangi, the operations director, and Warren Odaji, the CTO. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, Geoffrey. I see Paul is also with us here. So if you have any questions um, for the Jua bike team, you can ask. Hi, my name is Duta and I have a question. I think this is such an exciting um, business. Where are you based? I think that is my question because I, I run a business and we do a lot of deliveries. And one of the things I've been looking forward to is um, eco-friendly options uh, to partner with for deliveries. So maybe I'd like to know where you're based and how we can, you know, use your service. Sure. Thank Paul? you. Yeah. Paul? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. 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 Oh, yeah, we are based uh, in uh, Kindaruma Road at Kindaruma Court. So I'm happy to share our pin location uh, right here and you can uh, visit us as well. I think I'll also share my email address. You can reach out and we can take the conversation further. Thank you, Paul and the team. You can uh, please uh, share your contacts and uh, your location to the chat. Any last questions? Okay. We don't have any more questions in the chat for now. So if um, anyone else wants to raise a question, they can just unmute yourself. But if we don't have any further questions. Ethan. Please mute yourself if you're not asking questions. Thank you. Continue. All right. Well, um, we've heard all the pitches from our cohort now. Um, I would like to, first of all, congratulate all the entrepreneurs who presented their amazing solutions to all of us today. Everybody has been through an incredible journey. And we are very happy that we were able to be part of this. Um, but this is not the end of the story. This is only the beginning of a new chapter. Uh, we would like to keep in touch with you and keep supporting you while you develop further your social business solution. Once again, congratulations.
Uh, I will also like to invite everyone else here in the audience today to get in touch with us. If you are interested in what we are doing, if you share our values, if we share, if you share our vision, then please contact us to explore um, partnership opportunities. Um, you can also learn more about what we are doing and our programs. We have programs not only in East Africa, but also in other regions in the world. So I invite you to visit our website and also to subscribe to our social media channels where we are usually sharing about our work, about open opportunities and our um, programs. Um, I will also like to invite you to subscribe to our newsletter. You can scan the QR code that is on the screen now, or I will also share the link on the chat. Mm, through our newsletter, we are also sharing information constantly on our upcoming programs and events. So once again, thank you very much for taking the time to be with us today. Um, thank you to the entrepreneurs who join us and who share their solutions with us. Um, we are very happy to um, have been here sharing of the journey. And also we would like to take a moment to thank our guest speaker for sharing her insights from the sustainability tourism industry, but also from the immobility e sector. Um, if you still have any questions, now is the moment to ask. You can write them in the chat, or if you want, you could also contact us later through email. Um, yeah, so it has been a pleasure for me to be here with you today. I hope that you enjoyed this event as much as I did. And um, yeah, I hope to see you um, another time in another of our events. Uh, I would like to ask Bramble to say uh, some closing words if he wants. Thank, Thank you very, very much, much, Andrea. Thank you very much, everyone, uh, for joining us today. Um, thank you very much for our entrepreneurs for um, the period of time we have worked together. This is not the end, as Andrea say. We will be following up with you uh, sometimes this week or early next week in order to discuss with you the way forward. We also want to invite every other uh, participant to check um, our website on uh, our upcoming programs and also our current uh, running programs in East Africa um, and other parts of the world. And uh, lastly, I would like to wish all of us in this call a wonderful remaining part of the week. Take care and God bless you. Thank you very much and uh, hope to see you virtually or physically soon. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to say a few things. Thank you. Every, yes, uh, thank you to, to the UNIS team for, uh, for letting us be a part of this amazing project. Congrats to all the entrepreneurs. Good luck with everything. Hopefully we'll get, we get everything we want. So thank you for having us. And it was a pleasure working with everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Prem. And thank you, um, the whole team from SED. And uh, I think I see Leshan. Yeah, Leshan is our communication um, coordinator and Leshan has something for us. Leshan? A minute, yeah. So um, good afternoon, everyone. And um, thank you for joining us uh, for this demo day. I would like us to document this uh, particular session and I would like us to uh, kindly turn on our cameras so um and put on a very very big smile i'll just give you a minute or two to um turn on your cameras yeah um can see some are still turning on their cameras. Yeah, so now um let's um have a very big smile in uh, three, two, and uh, one. Thank you so much. 
Ramal over to you now. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, and God bless you. Bye.